Well, hello, everyone. This is Travis Lee with 3D Mail, and thanks for jumping on this very special webinar today. I'm glad you uh, could all make it. Uh, most of you know, and for those of you that don't know, I'll give you the quick overview, uh, but most of you very likely know that I run this 3D Mail business with my father, Keith. Um, and so we've ha we have this business. We have a <laughs> actually have a couple others as well, and that you'll get uh, you'll get to know those here uh, way more here in the next 60 minutes together. Um, but just to give you a little preview of what Keith is going to be talking about, I'm actually going to do about a two-minute intro here. Then we're gonna, going to uh, slide it over to Keith. Um, but really, and, I, and I'm going to steal this line from my sister, who actually uh, started this, because she actually works in this side of the business and the management uh, side of things. And so you'll hear about that today. But she actually said that the reason for this call, the reason for this webinar, the reason for this whole system uh, is Jenny and myself. We were the inspiration for what Keith calls now his management system. Uh, and, and here's what happened. Keith was a business owner, uh, like many of you are, uh, were and still are, uh, juggling family and business. And he didn't want to miss anything on either end. You know, he didn't want the business to, you know, stop growing. He didn't want the, the kids and wife at home to feel uh, neglected or left out. So he, he really wanted to have his cake and eat it too. Um, and as he was studying this stuff, he, you know, he studied various businesses, you know, um, uh, businesses that were, were quote unquote successful, and found that somewhere in that, in those two sides, they were very conflicted. They 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 were butting heads, the family side and the business side. Um, and so as he studied these things, you know, these people who appeared to have it all on the exterior, you know, really didn't. There was something in their in their business lives or their personal lives that wasn't clicking. And so what he did is he studied a whole bunch of systems that, that, that were out there, a whole bunch of management systems and customer service systems and ways to run your business, whether that be staff or customers or vendors and all that stuff. And he kind of took the, the high points from all of these different um, thought leaders, if you will, and kind of and, and blended them together so that, so that he could have a system that worked both personally and professionally for him. And, and because of this system, and I can speak uh, from the heart with this. Because of the system, he was there for everything growing up for me. Uh, he coached all kinds of sports for us. He was at, I, uh, I actually remember, I went away for college to play water polo, uh, which he also coached. Never coached, never, guy can barely swim, and he figured out a way to coach water polo. But he, um, uh, my, first, the, my first water polo game when I was playing collegiately, I thought to myself, wow, I think this is the first game I've ever played, the first game down the, uh, when I played collegiately. This is the first game I've ever played where I haven't had one of my parents here. And that was kind of an interesting thought. So, you know, when it, when it came to his, so, so when he, the so bottom line is he created a whole bunch of these systems in management, customer service, ways, ways to, to manage your business so you have time to have a, a robust growing business but still have time for all that other stuff, the personal life the spiritual life, the social life, the mental and physical part of life. So uh, with that, Keith, I think I'm going to hand it over to you, and uh, you can take it away from there. So everyone here is uh, uh, my father, uh, my, my co-business owner here, uh, Keith Lee. Great. Well, um, thanks so much, Travis. That, that was a great introduction. The one thing I want to do is make sure that you all there should have a little place to ask questions over there. Um, if you have a question during this, um, type it in there. I'll get to all the questions afterwards. I'm really comfortable with this subject. It's uh, the reality is that while this is new coming to market for you and others, I've been practicing this in my businesses for um, for over 20 years now. And the whole idea behind this is to live your bucket list and to live your bucket list now. And I consider going to work part of my bucket list. And that is doing the things that you know are most important in your business, doing the things that you really like in your business, too. I still do the marketing in a lot of my different businesses. I have five now. And I do the marketing for our biggest business. Um, and I love to do that. And that's why I do it. I also do other things that I really enjoy doing. I don't enjoy doing accounts payable, accounts receivable, any of that kind of stuff. I don't enjoy operations. I don't enjoy being in the warehouse. I would enjoy being a sales manager. I kind of like that, but I got a sales manager who's way better than I am. Um, and, and I spend my things on the things I really love to do at work, and that is the marketing. I've bought um, 
13 now, 13 either synergistic or competitors, businesses that were synergistic to my current businesses or competitors. I spend my time on those things. I spend my time starting a new business, this one with my daughter Jenny, um, that I've started. And, and so that's, and, and I spend my, things, my time on the important things in my business. I don't spend my time on the menial everyday tasks. I don't do any of those things. I don't know how to do any of those things. So that's a little bit about the bucket list at work, spending your time on the important things, getting away from the menial things. So it's not only spent your bucket list, the things you want to do, but the things that really add value to your business versus the menial everyday things. But it also means that I live my bucket list in my life too. But before I get onto that a little bit, I want to give you, yes, it's true, Travis and Jenny were the inspiration behind my management system. Uh, over 20 years ago, I was, frustrated. I wanted to make sure that I had a wonderful uh, work a business. I had a business that I could be really proud of, and I didn't want to miss anything at home. And that was being becoming entirely almost impossible to do. Um, I used to watch the Biography Channel a lot. The guys on that, all of them seemed to have some part of their life that were screwed up. No matter how well they did at certain things, they had things that were screwed up. And I didn't want to be that. And again, Jenny and Travis were the inspiration behind that management system and creating it for myself so that I had the time. I've spent, I've, since the kids were young, I, I take off about 10 weeks a, a year in vacation. And I've done that every year since. Now, I don't count them, but I take off when I want to. And it's an average somewhere around 10 um, weeks a year. Now, Jeff Heiss, though, was the inspiration behind bringing this um, business, this uh, Keithley business systems and the Make You Happy management system to market. And here's why Jeff was the inspiration. Jeff is in my mastermind group that I run here with Travis uh, in the Seattle area. One day, and this is based on Dan Kennedy marketing is what our mastermind group is, is based on. And one day in, in one of our meetings, Jeff said, what is this, why did Dan start having these local meetings? And I said, you know, I think it was basically, and I know, I, I, I'm almost certain this is why. He said it's why. I believe it's why. And Dan Kennedy wants to be not have a legacy of being a marketing guru that made more independent business people wealthy than anybody in history. Um, he has this big legacy to do that with other people. He wants to go down as, in my view, he doesn't say this, but in my view, the Napoleon Hill of the 21st century. You know, that's, that's what he wants to do. And I went on to tell Jeff, but Jeff, that's not, you know, that's not me. And we talked about legacies a little bit more. And, and I said, you know, that's not my legacy. The only real legacy that I want to live is that I want my kids and my, the rest, and my wife and my very close friends, and hopefully grandkids uh, at that point, when I pass, I want to, them to say, wow, I am sure glad I knew him. And so I went on to explain that. And Jeff knew that I had this management system that I created that made me, that allowed me, rather, to have a, an excellent business and um, have my home life. And he knew I had created that. And he said to me, he said, you know, Keith, if you ever brought that management system to market, you could do that same thing for a lot of other families. And um, it hit me. It, it, it hit me. It was somewhere around Christmas time with all of those good tiding cheers and all that kind of stuff. And I just flat couldn't get it out of my mind. And then um, so then I was thinking about that. And what happened is that the, the, the perfect storm of bringing this together happened, I guess. And, and what it was is that my daughter Jenny had gone into business. It doesn't matter what businesses she went into, but she'd gone into business for herself. And so she wanted to find out about this marketing stuff that I was doing because she was in business and she needed to make sure that she needed to get some customers. So she started finding, look, looking into this marketing stuff, and she ended up loving it. And she ended up being a huge um, um, student of the kind of marketing that I do. So now, here I am. I have this management system. I have Jeff Heiss 
guilting me into bringing this to, to market. Um, and then I have the person ready to bring it to market for me. So we decided to bring it to market. And, and so that's where we're at. Now let's move on a little bit to a little bit about the, um, the live your bucket list. Again, this is my bucket list. This is actually a year ago at, um, at uh, the 4th of July Independence Day at our house. Not this last one, but the one before that. This is me and my grandson, Carson's son, uh, Carson. That's me living my bucket list with Carson uh, at our house in the Seattle area. This is over at our house in Montana. This is about 16 miles from the house, and this is Carson, three years, one month old, skiing at the house in Montana. Uh, that is a steep slope. Look at me on that slope and check out the angle that I'm standing up. I'm not standing straight up. That's a steep slope, and that is a three three-year-old, one-month kid going that, down there. This is part of my bucket list. Carson is a lot of my bucket list right now. <laughs> and now we got Whitney. She's going to be the next part of my bucket list. This is Carson. I took a day off about a month after that picture in Montana and went skiing with him up in, in the Seattle area of Crystal Mountain. This is me and him on the chairlift. Um, it is so cool. The only thing I have to do with Carson is to lift him up onto the chair because he's not big enough. And then I need to lift him off of the chair at Crystal Mountain because uh, he can't get off. His legs aren't long enough. And then the next thing I do is say, slow down. Um, it is just the biggest kick. Uh, another part of my bucket list. This is Jenny up at uh, Whistler Mountain uh, doing um, backcountry skis. You skin up, walk up the mountain basically, take your skins off, and ski down. Uh, Jenny got me uh, hooked. Well, I haven't done it yet, but I did buy my equipment at the end of last season. So next year on my bucket list is to be going up with Jenny to go backcountry skiing, and we're going to probably get Travis and Carson into that at some point too. Go up, backcountry skiing, ski down in t untouched powder. Um, and one of the reasons I can do that, and one of the reasons that my whole life is better now, is that with these bucket lifts, I got to be in shape. So in the last year and a half, I've lost 30 pounds. I bike about uh, 50 to 70 miles a week. I, right now, I'm doing paddle boarding out on the lake because it's nice here. But you know, all of this helps you not only get your business in shape, but your body in shape if you start looking at it too. And here's another one that's my bucket list that I better be in shape. This is Exterminator um, at Crystal Mountain in the Seattle area. Now, Exterminator is um, incredibly steep. It is really steep. It's called an exterminator for a reason. I got two things on my bucket list right now. My bucket list right now for this one is ski exterminator with Carson. Now, Carson, again, awesome, already at three years old. He isn't going to be able to ski exterminator until he's um, 13. 12, 13. That means I'm going to be in my mid to late 60s. That means I better be in shape, and I'm going to be in shape, and I'm going to do that with Carson um, because that's on my bucket list. And now I got to stay in shape for another three years because Whitney was just born, and I want to and and uh, it's I want to do that too. So that's my bucket. That's what we're talking about bucket list. Now this. Um, presentation is for two different kinds of people. If you yourself have three or more employees, or if you're a coach or something like that, because I know we have a lot of you on the, on the call here today, um, if you're a coach and you have clients or members who have three or more employees, we already have 14, to give you an idea, 14 JVs signed up on this system, and it's brand new. Uh, we have JVs who have already turned around and, way, and, and made money on the system. So whether you have three or more employees or you have clients or members who have three or more employees. So in regards to managing your business, um, if you, now I'm going to talk about just you, okay? And if you have the clients that have this, you'll have to make this work. You'll have to change it to my clients have become slaves to their businesses, right? Okay, so, so in regards to managing your business, I've become a slave to my business. It seems like I'm always responding to things and taking care of problems. I have no time for myself. This is not fun. If you think that way, you're in the right place. 
if um, my business runs well, but if it ran smoother and I didn't have to have to do so many regular everyday menial things, I could work on actually improving and growing my business. There's a ton of you that are in this shape or a ton of your clients in that shape. And thirdly, my business is great, but I'm always looking for ways to improve our efficiency and effectiveness. Give you an example. I know a lot of you guys are, are Kennedy marketers out there. I'm still a ty Kennedy titanium guy. I go to all of the national events, but yet I've been in Kennedy for 20 years. I'm always looking for the next best thing. And that's what we have when it comes to management systems here. We have the next best thing coming up right here. Now, um, this management system is called the Make You Happy Management System. And it not only makes you happy. I'm, I'm sorry. I got mis mixed up here because the computer was slow. Now, what do you want to do? Do you want to implement a system that ensures you do things in your business correctly every time? Do you want to spend all of your time uh, working on your business rather than in it? Do you want to spend your time working on the important things in your business and not the menial basic tasks? And do you want to have more time to spend on the things you want to do, not on the things you have to do? If that's what you want to do, you're in the right place. Now, can I get all of that done in the next 45 minutes? If you think I can do that, I can. So the reality is I'm going to have something for you to invest in at the end of this. And if you think that you can learn all that, I mean, you can. I'll give you the steps. And if you want to do it on your own when you're done, that's just fine. But I can't teach you all of that. I can tell you what you need to do in the next 45 minutes, but I certainly can't teach you that in 45 minutes. Now, the Make You Happy Management System, why do I call it the Make You Happy Management System? It's called the Make You Happy Management System because it makes you happy, it makes your customers happy, it makes your managers happy, it makes your employees, we call them team members, that's a huge part of this system, by the way, is employees become team members, they got to become, and we'll talk about that a little later, and it even um, helps you, your vendors are happy, and the reason your vendors are happy is that you do the same thing each and every time so that you, they are happy because they know what to expect from you. I love this slide because it sums up the three huge reasons um, that systems are important. All wealth is based on systems. Let systems run the business and people run the systems. People come and go, but systems remain constant. For a business owner from me, that's my saying, for a business owner, systems set you free. Now, systems, oh, they sound complicated, right? Well, I'm going to tell you right now that a system is simply the documented way to do something. That's all that a system is. People who are in management and want you to rely on them for the rest of your life are going to tell you that systems are complicated, and I'm going to tell you that systems are not complicated. This is a system. This is the mail um, machine back at uh, in the warehouse, in our warehouse. Mail accounts, up there on the top, five different places where they expense mailing to. This tells them the five different places that they expense mailing to. That's a system. That's as simple as a system can be. Now, some systems have a lot of steps to them. But to, to tell you this next thing is, well, I'll tell you what I think of it when I, after I'm done. Business management system. This comes from someone that's actually teaching e-myth stuff. And I'm going to tell you right now, I love e-myth. It took me five, four times reading the book to get through it. Um, it took me four times to get through it because the first three, the fourth time I was bringing this system to market, and I figured I better get through it because everybody asked me, "Oh, it's e-myth stuff." And again, I love e-myth. The first three times I started it, I couldn't get through it because it was reading. It was like reading my own material. It was reading exactly what I had had come to realize that I needed in 1992. Um, I finally fixed, um, finished it, and this is from somebody who teaches you e-myth stuff, by the way. And this is where 
our system being a complete done for you system, if you will, um, I'll put this in perspective right here. A business management system. It's a complex system of people and systems that are all evolving at the same time. To build a great business, to get out of the survival mode, you need an outside perspective to help you see it clearly. Someone who can call it like it is and won't waste your time and money with band-aids and tricks. Now, again, I well, the real reality is that before my system, that was true. Um, systems were complicated. They weren't complicated. Management gurus, in my opinion, wanted to make them complicated, so you needed to rely on them. The whole idea that it is com a system is complex and that you need somebody else to help you and you're not smart enough, you know, that is just hogwash. It's total and complete hogwash. And go out, by the way, buy the book Hogwash. That way I can use this, uh, <laughs> this little picture here. It's total hogwash. Systems are not complicated, OK? Systems are, are, are easy to easy. Now, the, it, it, you, you're going to need some, if, if you have help putting them together, they can get put together really quickly, too. Now, to create all those systems, Again, that can be very time consuming, but what we put together is a way to create those for yourself incredibly quickly. So, a business management system. Here, now the other guy told you it was complex and you needed someone else. Here's what a business management system is. You create a system when you document, put in writing, something that needs to be done in your business. You create an effective business management system when you have everything you do documented and implement effective performance management system. Um, let, let's perform it. So it's systems and empowerment, which we haven't even talked about yet, but then a performance management system. How do you keep track of what's being done? Well, the big one is performance reviews. Wonderful. Everybody loves performance reviews, right? OK, I'm sorry. I'm being sarcastic. Almost nobody likes them. Everybody hates them. The problem not only with not liking them is they don't lead to the results that you want. People leave demotivated, not motivated. And I am going to tell you that performance reviews suck. Performance reviews are like trying to drive your car while looking in the rear view mirror. Now, let me ask you this question. Just on the face of it, would you rather have a performance review or would you rather have a personal development interview? Whether you're on the receiving end or the giving end, performance review, personal development interview. Do you want to review people or do you want to develop people? We're all about developing people, and it is the coolest thing. It is, um, you, I, I even get chills right now talking about it. And I get chills when I, every time I, I finish a performance development interview, I get chills. In performance development interviews, you'll love them, your managers will love them, your entire team will love them. They increase job satisfaction and morale. They increase the behavior you want. Incredible. You know what's going on in your entire organization, and both you, if you're giving the performance uh, development interview, or if you're on the receiving end, and leave pumped. Leave pumped every time. And there is a skill to that, and we're going to teach you those skills. Now, let's get back to those three big, um, oh, Mary, um, hang on, Mary, I'm going to demute you. Mary, are you there? I'm here. OK. Mary, you might need me? to speak up a little bit at least. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. OK, great. Mary, you might need to speak up a little bit. But Mary is a manager. She managed operations in our business. And I wanted to have her on the call for two reasons. Number one, I do a personal development interview with her. But then she has team members who she does personal development interviews with so that she's the interview 
the personal development interviewer in one and the interviewee in, in others. Um, well, interviewer in many and the interviewee where I'm interviewing her in, in one of them. Mary, if you would, um, tell people what, what have been PDIs done for our business and for you personally um, since we started uh, implementing them? Well, overall, I have a lot better sense of knowing I'm on top of things. Um, it's great having an individual time set aside for every individual person. It's so easy in day-to-day -day busy, busy work to not have time to sit down with everybody. PDIs, they take about 15 minutes. The best 15 minutes, the more up-to-date 15 minutes you're going to have with any employee. Because the employees themselves um, create their own goals, they set up their own deadlines, they feel like they're achievable, so they're making the progress on them. Uh, people end up being more productive because of this. Very seldom does anybody come into a PDI and not have progress on everything that is on their goal sheet. It's going to happen from time to time, but without the PDI, it's going to happen more. Um, yeah. It allows so, us to also. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Mary, Mary um, by the way, is down in our oh, Denver office helping them with inventory right now. But, so go ahead, Mary. It's actually her. Yeah. Um, it actually gives us time to review other things that's going on, not only what their specific goals and objectives are to keep up on their progress and their goals, but also if there are any frustrations out there. Do you need training on something? Are you falling behind? Do you have extra time? Anything like that, it keeps me up to date on what's going on with the business so that I can arrange other things differently to help them out too. Great. So and I'm just, sure everybody it, is it, thinking here, yeah, I, I'm sure everybody on, on the line here is thinking, well, how long does this take? You know, I average my PDIs to be, yeah, I average my PDIs to be about 15 minutes. And mm -hmm. what ends up being a time saver on everything is at the end of every PDI is, is there anything else? This is where they bring things that they have really stockpiled all their questions to bring them all in at one time. So they're not bugging me throughout the day. I don't have 18 people coming to me twice a day asking for specific things. I get them once a week. We handle everything, the PDI, their questions, everything within that 15 minute period. And I'm free. They're not tying me up. I'm not tying them up. It's a true time saver. Yeah, yeah, I, I find. Uh, to give um, thanks, Mary. Um, uh, that's uh, I'll, well. We'll continue here with the rest of this. Thanks so much for your time. Um, I have PDIs with about six people, um, and I don't have them every week. Mary, for instance, and I we schedule them about every other week. When we're both out of town or we're not available, we skip them and we have it the next week. So Mary does all of our operations in in American Retail Supply, big job. And I spend about 20 minutes every three weeks in our personal development interviews. And I know way more what's going on now than I ever knew before. Back when we had performance reviews, what a mess. I mean, nobody liked and they were in a mess. We thought we were accomplishing something. But you know what? We quit even doing them because we knew we weren't really accomplishing anything. So that's that's the we we will I can't show you this I can't show you everything how we re, re, um, replace performance reviews with per, uh, personal development interviews but that's what we do within our system. So the next thing is that I want to talk about is Dan Kennedy talks about all wealth is based on systems and this let's see right there. Sorry, this isn't going as fast sometimes keeping up. But all wealth is based on systems. And for me, what that means to me is multiplying myself. I want to work, and this whole all wealth is based on systems is all about multiplying yourself and creating systems so that you don't have to be involved with, with things. Um, I, again, I spend my time on the important things, on the marketing, on the starting a new business, on the working new ventures, going to Dan Kennedy's Titanium Mastermind. Um, uh, that you know, if I was too busy working on menial tasks, I would never be able to get those things done. But here's what's critically important: my goal 
in this is to actually make you irrelevant to your business. Now, I'm not talking about irrelevant forever, but I am talking about irrelevant day to day, day and even irrelevant week to week, and even irrelevant weeklies, you know, more than one week. Let me give you an example. When I went to the Mediterranean for three weeks two years ago, I gave Mary, who you listen to, I gave Mary the, the ship that I was on and told her that if you need to find me, you'll have to find a way to get a hold of me. Um, didn't, get a, didn't bother to get a, didn't check any emails, didn't bother to get an international phone, didn't do any of those things. And the cri critical thing about all this is not only wasn't I interrupted when I was on vacation, but because of the systems, because of employee empowerment, because of team member empowerment, the business was actually running better when I came back than when I left. And you'll see why that happens here very shortly. Now, the other thing. If you're irrelevant, to, if you're critical for the day-to-day -day running of your business, if you're critical even for the week-to-week -week running of your business, if you're critical to your business, what is your business worth when you sell it? Not much. When you're irrelevant to the running of your business on a day-to-day -day basis, your business is worth multiple of what it used to be. Let's go back to Gerber. Let systems run the business and people run the systems. People come and go, but systems remain constant. Here's job knowledge. Here's job knowledge without systems. OK, someone comes in and they're your purchasing person. They learn job knowledge on the um, vertical axis, time on the horizontal axis. They come in and they're, uh, they learn the job. So their knowledge goes up, goes up, goes up, and crash they leave. So here's what that looks like over time without systems. Hopefully you're getting a little better even, even as people leave, and, but, but it's always learn, 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 crash, learn, 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 crash, learn, 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 crash. Now what if everything you do is documented? Then it's learn, 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 oh, down a bit. We're going to learn, learn, learn more because we're going to get better. This is all about getting better over time in everything you do and down a little and up and down. And so you continually improve your business. Let me give you an example. Our receptionist has 32 um, systems. We call systems make you happy job requirements. All that means is 32 things that she does, if you will. If all of those are documented and she leaves, how hard is it to replace her? Not hard. Okay. Now we're going to go back to my story a little bit. So for the, for the business owner, systems set you free. This is why I went out to find systems in the first place. I was, um, I'll give you a little bit of it. I came into American Retail Supply in, in 1978 as a salesman. We sell, sold hand marker, handheld price marking guns to retail stores. Now let me tell you, that was a thriving business. Uh, well, that's sarcastic again. That business was going down the two. You know, the, the, how many handheld price markers do you see out there versus years ago? So the idea was that we're going to make, we're, I came, started managing the business in 1981 with the, the marketing plan of being everything retailers need to run their stores. Business grew very well through the 80s and, and up through the early 90s. It grew fine. We added products. We had customers that were happy. Back then, I was huge on customer service. I loved all the Tom Peter stuff in search of excellence. I studied um, um, Disney. I studied Stu Leonard that was in there. I studied out. I studied Nordstrom. Studied all of the great customer service people, and we were dedicated to this huge customer service uh, in our business, and that's what made us grow. But again, the systems weren't were were well. Let me show you. Here's what's happened. This was me in 1980, 80, 1992. Going to business, going, going to work in 1992. That's a pretty handsome fellow there, right? This is me 15 minutes after being at work. I was burnt out. I was taking care, I was taking care of far too many problems. I was taking care of far too many things. Uh, today, almost no problems come my way. First off, our number of problems are cut 
80, 90 percent as a relationship to the amount of business we do. Because of the systems we have in place, we don't have those kind of problems. And number two, we have emp empowered team members and we have empowered managers so that I very seldom end up working on a problem. Every customer that we have here at American Retail Supply gets my direct line to call me if they have an issue that hasn't been taken care of. That's 10,000 customers a year have my direct line, and I give it to them often. So 10,000 of them. I may get, it's been months since I've had a call. I may get three, four, five a year where customers are calling me and saying, Keith, I need, you know, they, they didn't take care of me here. Okay, that's having systems in place. Now, what I did is back in 1992 when I was frustrated, I went and I studied all of the, the, the three big management gurus of that time. And you guys should go look at these guys a bit, especially W. Edwards Deming. W. Edwards Deming, by the way, is the guy whose picture up, I don't know if it's still there, for years and years and years, he was the guy whose picture was behind the receptionist at Toyota's desk because he taught Toyota how to put systems in place. I studied Joseph Duran, I studied Phil Crosby, I studied all of the, and I, like I said, I'd already studied all, all of the customer service people, but I studied these guys, and, and there was a problem with them. All of their stuff that they did was in regards to manufacturing. And in manufacturing, you can dial in quality. You can dial in um, a great machine. You can buy great engineers that design great machinery that make great quality. I wanted to have a quality organization that wasn't a manufacturing um, based on manufacturing. So when you have a business like that, which is likely what you have right now, you don't need, you can't dial in quality. You need to get buy-in. And that's what we do when we talk about em empowering our team. We need to get our team empowered and get buy-in from them. Um, with um, Gerber, again, I read it four times. I found they're, they're, it's great stuff. But there's four things where it really, and Gerber and all of the, man, uh, all of the um, uh, management gurus there um, are failing a bit, and these are the four fatal flaws. It is not a, a simply, uh, it is not simply a virtually done for you step by step system. And that's what we have here. We have a step by step done for you system um, to create systems in your business incredibly time consuming. If you're trying to create systems um, from scratch and, 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 and write up all of these different ways to do everything in your, job, in your business from scratch, it's incredibly time consuming. One of the things they talk about is you need this outside perspective because systems are complicated. Da, 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 da. And that outside perspective is costly. Here's the biggest thing, though. In, in, in these kind of management, business improvement is still dependent almost exclusively on the business owner to create the systems, and you ain't that smart. It's that, I mean, I'm not, we have 30-some uh, team members in American Retail Supply. There's no way I'm smarter than the combined smartness of those 30-some. There's no way I'm smarter about the warehouse operations than our warehouse people. There's no way I'm smarter about purchasing than our purchasing people. You know, but in, a, in, in this type of, of Gerber type, if you will, management, you're responsible for creating all those systems. And he uses Disney, or not Disney, he uses McDonald's as an example. And that's fine. McDonald's, OK, they have tons. They have people at the top that can be responsible for creating these systems. You need to get buy-in from your team to create these systems, and we're going to show you exactly how to do that. So in a make-you-happy management custom business, the improvement in your business is not dependent on you. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about customer service. What describes um, your customer service training? Um, 
we tell our staff to deliver good customer service, they should know what it is. This is from surveys that we've done. I, I wrote the book, um, Out Nordstrom, Nordstrom, Creating the World's Best Customer Service, and this is from some of those surveys. Uh, we tell our staff to deliver good customer service, they should know what that is. We tell our staff to deliver good customer service and give them some examples uh, sometimes, but nothing formally. We have meetings about customer service once in a while and tell everyone they should give good customer service. All new staff gets customer service training when they are hired. And everyone has gone through our customer service training and they consistently and persistently are reminded about the customer service expectations. So let me ask you in your business, which of those do you think you should be doing when it comes to customer service? Well, when I ask this and I'm doing this presentation live, everybody raises their hand for E. And that is everyone has gone through our customer service training and they are consistently and persistently reminded about our customer service expectations. Everybody thinks they should have that. Here's the reality from our surveys. 2% of the people do that. And why do they do that? There's nothing simple and easy out there. You have some of the raw, raw things, and you go and you give your customer service training to your team, and you have some of the raw, raw things going on there. But the customer service is not simple and easy to, um, to train your people with. I wrote the book, Out Norse and Nordstrom's Creating the World's Best Customer Service. And what is Out Nordstrom, Nordstrom customer service? It's customer service that is so good that customers come back time and time and enthusiastically tell others about you. Now, I'm assuming that you want to have customer service, that everybody is trained with the same customer service, and you consistently and persistently remind your team about that. Assuming you want that, here's what you need to do to do that. And here's what we provide. A step-by-step -step guide to getting out Nordstrom Nordstrom customer service implemented fast. Okay? Now, out Nordstrom Nordstrom initial team member customer service training DVD and tools. Now, um, this is more this is more than just initial team member training DVD, but so you can use it after the initial training too, but you get your team together, you watch this DVD. Your, there's a leader's guide with it, word for word scripted if you want to. You can vary from the script if you want to, but it is word for the word if, if you want it there. The other thing you get is a workbook so that while they're watching the DVD, they're filling out this workbook. It means that they've got to be watching it. You get, uh, again, the script, the leader's guide, and the answers to the workbook. Now, what's critically important is that after your team gets this training, what happens to new team members? You also have the Out Nordstrom Nordstrom new team member training DVD and tools. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, there's not much difference there. The real difference is the opening, and the opening says, you were hired because we know you're our next customer service superstar, and it goes on to say a few more things than that. But what this guarantees is that your team has the same training as every new team member coming on board has, and you're all going down the same road together. Now, the new employee, I do recommend that your the manager of that employee sits in, team member sits in on that. It even gives it more um, credibility, if you if you will. But it can be done by just sitting them down with it and going from there. You're going to get on tra ongoing training guidelines. Here's where most customer service fails dramatically, and that is you have a raw, raw session. Everybody comes to the session. They get excited about it. They go out. They talk about it for a while, and then over time, everything goes back to the same thing. We give you ongoing training guidelines, and this is really cool. You get your weekly customer service tidbits to share with your team. Send these out via email every week, and it's just a very quick and a customer service tidbit that you can then move, send to your team. You can copy it and, and put it on paper, or you can um, send, give it to them, send, forward it via email. It could be something as simple as, you know, I love going to a restaurant where the where and I go in to use the uh, wash my hands, and the dispenser has already dispensed the paper towel so that I don't even have to wave my hand under it. Um, what can what little thing can we do in our business 
to make customers see that we appreciate them to that degree. It can be done, um, and these are just little tidbits, and that's what you need to do, is you need to make sure that those little tidbits get out there every week. Now, anybody interested in the number one thing you can do to improve your customer service, and you can do it tomorrow? This is huge. You can implement attaboys and attagirls. This started, we used to call this some stuff, and, and I put it a get together years ago before we had email, and, and, I would, and people would tell me the good things that other people did for them as, as far as customer service in our business, internal customer service, if you will, how someone helped someone else, how someone did a great job with external customer service. That is the whole idea of, of how are you taking care of of uh, the external customers and share that with others. Once you start sharing this with others, it gets to be kind of a viral thing. So here's an example uh, from Jen. Uh, I have a client with tons of shelves for gondola units that are not Lozier. She wants the units to fit in, and Bob was able to tell tell me who's who whose they were from a picture uh, and going on and saying how great Bob was. That's from one person to another. It becomes like a, a virus, if you will, of good things. Here's another from Kathy uh, saying how what great Lexi is. Lexi was a is was at this point a new uh, sales assistant for, for us, and she was telling how great Kath, um, uh, Kathy was saying how great Lexi was doing. So these can come from managers, and they or they can or even more effective, and they end up happening from team member to team member. And it can be someone who helped out, whatever, implement attaboys and attagirls in your, in your business. And again, we're going to go back to creating systems in your business. And remember, a system is simply the documented way to do something. And we already talked about this. Simple systems are, can be simple, and the best systems are simple. Now, in, in the management system, we call these systems make you happy job requirements. And in, and in the um, um, stuff that I put together with you, we show you how to create three systems in 13 minutes. Let me give you an example. I'm the king of S and D. Bill Glazier, I used to be in his ma in his um, in his uh, high level um, uh, mastermind group, and he called me the king of S and D. And I'm the and so what I made you is a system that is all about S and D. Swipe and deploy, basically legally taking it. I mean, we're not talking about stealing. We're talking about taking what I've made and you use it in your business. For instance, here's a make you happy job requirement on fundraisers. Everybody has this happen in your business if you have people. <coughs> Excuse me, if you have team members. Somebody is is a new. It comes to work with the fundraiser for their kids' stuff. And they go around and they bother everybody, and it gets in the way, and it makes people uncomfortable, and da 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 da. So we have a make you happy job requirement, okay? A system for fundraisers, okay? You can use your email, you can use your voicemail, you can put a note in everyone's bin. You may display the product in the lunchroom. Tells them what they can do. No no. You can't put it in the display room. We actually had someone do that before we had a system. And do not approach anyone directly with requests for donations. That's a system. If anybody comes to work and they start um, wanting to go around and talk to everybody, we just refer them back to this make you happy job requirement. Can you use this in your business? Can you take it and tweak it and now have a system in your business? Of course you can. And we have, we've, well, I'll get to that a little later system, last person in the building. These are the things that you do if you're the last person in the building. Can you take what we've done here and tweak it to work in your business? We have dozens and dozens and dozens of these that are simple that you can either use as they are or you can use them with tweaks to, for your business. Greetings for a transfer call. We love the telephone doctor. Um, I forget what her real name is, but we use her training. And using her training, this is one of the ideas. This is what we came up with. Look at this, by the way. This was created in 2000. We've never addressed this since. I don't know how to go back quickly to the other ones, but I believe 
Yeah, um, the other one on uh, was created in 2000 also. The other one we updated, it was first created in 1991 and updated in 2012. So we had something to update it with. Okay, these, you create them once, they're there. You take what I've already done and you tweak it to work in your business. So creating 30 systems in less than three hours. So I told you that you would create three systems in 13 minutes. What we do is we gave you like a bunch of we give you a bunch of those up front that are real simple. You can create more than three systems in 13 minutes. You can take the things that work that are that you do in your business from what we've already put in there, and you can probably tag a dozen of those in three minutes that you can use in your business. Okay, that may be an exaggeration, maybe eight or nine, but then create 30 systems in less than three hours. Here's how we we have you do that. Um, I got the wrong picture of this right here. This should actually have a green tab on it. Sorry about that. What you do is you go back to that, in that uh, three ring binder that I just showed you, it has tons of systems. It has hundreds of systems. That is the make you happy job requirements. In the front of the binder, <coughs> we took the ones that are extremely general. In other words, the things like fundraisers, answering the phones, opening and closing, opening the mail, all of those things that are really generic, if you would, and we put them in the front of this binder. So you're going to go through the binder, and again, this should be a green tab. If it's something that you can use word for word in your business, you put a green tab on it. Okay. If it's something that needs to be tweaked a little bit, see the green tab over there on the left, that was actually supposed to be my picture that was there because that's up at the front of the binder, right? It's up, and most of these are fairly short because they're things most anybody could use. If it's something that you can use word for word, again, you put a green tab. We even give you the tabs to put on it. We send, we send them with, with the system. If it's something that you need to tweak a little bit, you put a yellow tab on it. You come back and tweak it. If it's something that you're going to have to make a lot of changes to, but you don't want to forget it. It's something like, oh my gosh, we really need to, to, um, to you, we need to know, we need to cover this in our business. This system that they have down here won't work for us, but we need to make sure and cover it in our business. You put a red tab on it. If you go through it and it doesn't apply at all, you leave it blank. Now here's the great thing. You're not doing all this. Okay, well, I'm going to give you a little preview. You're not doing all this. We're going to show, I'm going to show you how to get your team to actually do this. So this is what the book might look like after it's done. And this wasn't done, but it's, it shows you the idea. Now, so 30 systems in less than three hours. We, these are divided into these categories and more. So here's what you do is you simply create two MJRs. You go through and find two that apply to accounts, uh, accounting, two that apply to sales, two that apply to purchasing. You write them up as you think they are with your team. Now, you go and show your manager or the team member what you did, whoever it applies to. You show them what you did, how you said, and you say, hey, we want to make sure we document everything we do so that you know it's there for you, it's there for anyone you might want to train, it's there if you go on vacation. So we want to make sure that we document everything we do. And in fact, we're going to show them why they do that, why you do that in another section of this in a DVD training. So you show <coughs> them what you did with these two. And then, again, for receptionists, for instance, you show them two, and then you give them the other two and say, would you please go through the, well, first off, you ask them, is this correct? Is this how we really do it in our business? You're empowering them all of a sudden. You're saying, you want them to tell you how you do it. This is how you think you do it, but you want them to tell you. Oh, no, we'd, let's change it to this. Now, you ask them to go over the other 30 that apply to the reception area. And the receptionist, all of a sudden, is going over this, and they're putting the green, the yellow, the red on there. And they're determining the right way to make, these, make you have your job requirements work in their area. All of a sudden, you've empowered them. So you're going to do this. Let's again, the receptionist area, you, you do a couple for them, and then you let them go on to do the rest. Um, 
creating an empowered um, team member DVD training. This is incredible. And what it's all about is the goal is that you are not required to get things done. You get your team to do these, sim these simple things. They write up the system. But then when you need a team, when you need to get people together to solve things, you show them how you're going to do that. And that's what the DVD training does. It actually teaches people how to be empowered with the day-to-day -day things, but then also helping to make, the, to make the big issues. So for instance, if we have something that uh, affects sales and purchasing, we're going to make sure to get sales and purchasing together to, so that they can work on that problem together and come up with the answer. Um, if you have something that uh, is causing conflict in your business, you get a team involved uh, on that so that you don't have to be King Solomon anymore, so that the team can decide how to get this done. Um, and the other time that you have a have the team thing is when someone asks for a Make You Happy Action Team, you put these teams together and you can get a better answer. So let me, in 19, in 2006, I had a big event for all of my retailers. I had Bill Glazier, Corey Rudel, uh, Lee Miltier, um, Bunt Joel Bauer, all kinds of people up here speaking. And so for that um, event, I put together my Make You Happy Management System in 2006. When I put it together in 2006, it was incredibly theoretical. <clears throat> None of this step-by-step, -step, take my systems and tweak them was in there. None of the stuff to show you how to create, how to actually implement personal development interviews. In fact, we didn't even have personal development interviews back there. That wasn't in it, okay? It was basically the customer service and the theory behind system. And, but here's some of the um, testimonials that I got from that system that wasn't step-by-step -step that I presented and actually did very well. Um, with that back in 2006, but it really wasn't something I wanted to go to market with back then because it wasn't done for you enough. This is Kevin Turner from Providence uh, Enterprises in Olympia. He was extremely uh, happy with how excited his team was and all the different ideas he got from their, his team. This is Allison Walter, uh, the savvy shopper in Ames, Iowa. This is pretty incredible. Allison actually had a retail store that she owned. And what she did is she actually was able to quit working in the retail job and go get a second full-time job that she really wanted, turn over the, um, the retail store, if you will, the operations to her team, because she wanted to work in a, a nonprofit. She wanted to work in a nonprofit that was where her heart was. So she actually went to work, got this full-time job in a nonprofit, still had her business working because of the systems and the empowerment that she put together for her business. This is Rolf Williams. Rolf uh, talks about how his desk used to be a total mess, um, and he was trying to take uh, care of everything all the time, solving everyone's problems, and now uh, his biggest problem is that his business is growing too fast. Kind of a good problem. Now, we implement this system over three months. Why do we implement this system over three months? Number one, you and your team need time to change. Uh, this is significant change. You're empowering your team. You're creating systems. You're putting in a new performance management system. Um, you're, you're starting out with, with customer service at a level that, that is just extreme, if you will. You and your team need time to change. You can't change it that fast, and neither can your team change it that, that fast. This is a big one, too. If you throw all of this at your team at once, first off, your team is already going to say, oh, yeah, he's been to another seminar. He listened to this other thing. We'll listen. We'll pretend we're really into it. Hey, you know, just just listen and look like it sounds really great. And you know, we know this too will pass. 
um, over the three months, you're going to prove to them that this too will not pass. And it is just logical that it is over this period of time. Customer service we're going to start with, a new level of customer service in your business. You're going to show them in that first month <clears throat> because you've, you've given them those customer service tips over this over a three-week period. We're going to show you the seven things you need to do the day you implement this in your business to show your team how committed you are to this next level of customer service. Seven individual things that you can do that will will show them that you're committed and you do them in your office, you do them in your store, you do them in your warehouse, wherever you work, you, imp you do these seven things. Second month, you're going to do creating systems and team member empowerment. Again, where you're going to start working on these systems, you're going to show your team how to create these systems, and then you're going to go over the team member empowerment DVD. DVD is entitled, You're Important. What we want to tell you, what you want to tell your team is that you're important. We need you to grow like we want to grow. We want your input. Um, I, I, um, and, and I was going to go into something about uh, input and where that goes, but I'm going to leave that a, a tiny bit later here. Um, so we need and want your input. Now, so in month one. Fast Start Guide to uh, to Getting Out Nordstrom, Nordstrom uh, Customer Service Implemented in Your Business Fast. You're going to get the Customer Service Training DVD. Again, this has a word-for-word -word script if you want it, plus, or you can vary from it if you want. It has the workbook that your people need to uh, take their, fill it out while they're watching it. You also get the new team member training DVDs, again, with the workbook and the script. You get ongoing training guidelines, and you get the weekly customer service tidbits to share with your team. You also get one-hour customer service telecoaching with me, and three months of, a, of Keith Lee's Inner Circle uh, newsletter membership. And there's actually a lot more there. I just don't have time to go over it. In month two, a month later, you're going to get into creating systems to control your business why you need systems and empowerment, why systems alone aren't enough. And again, this goes into the whole idea that um, if you create systems, you're only halfway there. You get your team creating systems with you, you're, you've, you've made your job infinitely easier. You're going to get a step-by-step -step guide to um, procedure to creating your first systems, your first three systems in uh, 13 minutes. Again, we went over that a little bit, uh, how you do that with the green tabs. You're going to get a step-by-step -step guide to creating 30 systems in less than three hours. Again, there you create about two for every different department, and then you move on. And the step-by-step -step procedure to have other create all of the systems you need in your business at breaks next speed. That's where you turn this over to the other people. You turn it over to your team. You show them that you believe in them. Okay. Now that doesn't mean you don't review them. You obviously review them a little bit, but you know the reality is they're the ones doing them. Okay. Then you're going to get the Make You Happy Management System training DVD and tools. Again, this has a workbook with it, word for word script. This is the management system training on how to take, how to, how to get, how to solve those big issues and how we do that as a team. This is incredible. We have big issues that we solve as a team in my business. I haven't been a member of one of these teams for ages. I come in as an expert advisor at times, and I certainly review big things. But as far as getting them solved and 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 how we're going to take care of them, uh, the team does this. And you may have a number of those. You may need to have some of these to start with, and quite a few of them, and one right after another uh, team things because you might have big things that need to be solved. We don't have big things anymore. I mean, we don't have them. We've covered all of the big things. We may have one or two of these groups company-wide, and I'm talking about a $9 million company here for the one company I have. Company-wide, we may have one or two of these, maybe three of them a year now, because we just don't come up with big things. We've solved all the big things. Then in month two, you're going to get another one-hour um, creating systems and team member empowerment uh, telecoaching with me. Uh, month number three. You're going to get the performance management manual. This basically is taking what's the 
third, the second thing here is three DVDs on in implementing performance management um, through P personal development interviews in your business. This is um, four hours, four and a half hours of Vince Zerpoli showing you how to uh, implement a performance management system in your in your business, and how to how to do these personal development interviews so people do leave psyched, ready to go to work, ready to take on the world. Vince is a master of this. I learned this from him. Um, I, uh, he's a partner on this with me, and it's just masterful how these personal development interviews are. I can tell you I didn't believe in them to start with. I didn't believe that you could have meetings this positive all the time and and get things done. I was a believer after I started implementing them and saw what happened. By the way, you will spend way less time managing your business by doing personal development interviews than anything you do right now. You're going to get four audio CDs with eight actual PDI in PDIs, including the um, evaluation. These are personal development interviews that we've done. Two of them are Mary's, doing them with team members um, that she works with. Two of them are from our sales uh, person. It's a number of them, me, me doing one with someone who runs other businesses, another business for us, me doing one with the sales manager, doing one with uh, Mary again. These are actual PDIs, so you can listen in on them, see what a PDI looks like, and we give you all of the things that you need to make these personal development interviews a success. You're going to get a personal development inter interview evaluation form. That is. So when you start doing your personal uh, development interviews, you'll want to tape them. And you want to tape them so you can go back over them and listen to them and evaluate them for yourselves. If you have managers doing these with other people, you'll want to have them tape them and they do a personal evaluation themselves. And then you sit in on that about, and then you ask them, what do you think? You'll get a one hour live group implementing uh, uh, personal development interviews in your business, telecoaching with me. And again, as a review, implementing out Nordstrom, Nordstrom customer service in month one. Month two, creating systems at breakneck speed and empowering your team. In month three, implement uh, personal development interviews. And right now, on this call, if you decide you want to invest in this within the next 60 minutes, you get these bonuses. Man, uh, managing conflict in your business. This is incredible. If you, this is for personal conflict, people having personal conflicts with one another. This is like gives them their options if you have these personal conflicts. Let me tell you, the minute you put this out, your conflict that in conflicts in your business will be reduced by two thirds, if not more, because they're going to find out that if they have a conflict in their business with someone in the business, they're going to have to step up to the plate and do something about it. Um, and you give it to everybody in your business, so everybody knows what's expected. Hiring top performers. If you don't use benchmarking in your business, you need to use benchmarking in your business. Um, <clears throat> I'll leave that at that for now. Evaluating pay in your business. Anybody come to you and ask for a raise? What do you say? Well, what we say is, well, let, here's how I use it mostly. The only people, managers ask me if someone can have a raise or whatever. And I'll give them this. Uh, evaluating pay in your business and say, you know, they know what they're going to get. Read this over and tell me why their pay should be increased or why their pay uh, or someone new. It's an incredibly uh, effective, again, two-page little tool. An employee handbook. Do you have a complete employee handbook in your business? You're going to get a copy of my employee handbook for our biggest business, American Retail Supply. I am not going to tell you that you can use it in your business because I don't know if everything in it is legal in your state um, or not. Uh, but I am going to tell you that you can probably take it as a place to start. Again, s and Take this one, make your own. And um, three 20-minute one-on-one telecoaching sessions with Keith. This is only offered, um, uh, this is almost never offered. Um, I just don't, um, 
that's my time, and I'm and I multiply my time, right? We already talked about that. Uh, so three 20-minute uh, one-on-one telecoaching coaching sessions with me, uh, if you decide to invest in this in the next um, 60 minutes. <clears throat> Double guarantee, if you don't like it for any reason whatsoever, the binder clashes uh, with the books in your bookcase, return it for a full, no questions asked, refund any time within the first year. Double guarantee, if you actually do something to implement, even one thing in the system and you want to return it, you can refund it, you can return it at any time for a full refund. Just be honest, you know, did you really give it any effort? You know, I'm going to trust you, if you gave it effort, and you want to return it at any time, you can return it. So question is, what is this worth for you? <clears throat> what is your family worth? What is your freedom worth? What could your business be worth when it comes time to sell it, or even now? What is it worth to you to spend your time on the important and not the unimportant? And what is it worth to live your bucket list? Now. What's cool about this is that I, I told you early on that Jeff um, said, Keith, you could look what you could do for other families if you brought this to market. And without question, this is, as a business owner, your business will be so much, your life will be so much easier. You'll come home less stressed. I think America is, I. I think families are in dire straits in America. Um, I'm getting on my soapbox here, but families are in dire straits. Not only you as a business owner will go away, go back home with less stress, but your team members will be more fulfilled in their business. When your team members know that they, you really value them, that they're empowered, that they have something to say, they are going to go home, and they're going to be better for their family. Um, Washington CEO named our business American Retail Supply the best business to work for in Washington State. Well, this was a number of years ago, and I've not even applied for it since. Um, but we were named the best business to work for in Washington State by Washington CEO Magazine. Now, that wasn't because we had the best pay and the best benefits. It was because our team felt like they were listened to, that they were important. And that's why we were named the best business to work for in Washington State. Now, what's the cost of this? If you go on the website, $2,997, OK? Three months implementation, um, all of the coaching that goes in with it also. Now, right now, you're on this call. I don't have to split money with a JV. I don't have to split money with a promoter. You're already clients of 3D Mail. Uh, it didn't cost me a ton to promote this, so you're going to get a very, very special price. Today, within the next 60 minutes, if you want to order a one-time payment of $1,997 or three payments of $735. Now, what if you're a JV? What if you want to get in on taking this to your team? Um, JVs, you're going to um, invest in the first one at 1997. You get 100% of the sale of the next two and three. That means your total revenue off of the first three is going to be um, now you can sell that first one if you want, or you can use it in your business. Either way you want, OK? So you, the possible revenue out of the first three of those is $5,991. Total cost to you, $1,997. So you net $3,994. So again, here's the payment. Here's the payments. Uh, $1,997 one-time payment, $735 in three payments. Order at Keith lee.com slash 3d mail if you will and I am going to go and check any questions well Jenny just walked in with something oh I need to tell you <laughs> Jenny's like okay there are applicable taxes if we do business in a state that you're in 
uh, or if your state is one of those that are anal when it comes to collecting taxes, we're going to have to charge sales tax. That's We can't control that. There are also um, 3997 in uh, shipping. Thank you, Jenny, for uh, asking for, um, for that. Now, I'm going to get on to the questions, and I hope that um, I wish I could Hey, Trav, if you're on there, would you come and show me how to open this up better so I can see this? Will you record and share this seminar? Yep, it's being recorded. Um, Trav, can you see how I, I don't want to click it and lose it. So would you please click it to see if I can open it up to read them better? And if not, we'll just, I'll just, I can go through them like that. That's fine, I'll go through them like this. Okay. Um, yes, it is being recorded. Let's see what else, what other questions we have. Can your system work <laughs> for a snob salesman? I've tried to have employees in the past, but always turned into a disaster. It will absolutely work with them. Um, the whole idea is, even though, now will it work with every individual? No, I can't tell you that it will work with every individual. Can I tell you that it works with almost everyone? Absolutely. And the whole idea is that when people feel like they're important, when people feel they're empowered, when you use the techniques that Vince Zerpoli teaches in those three DVDs on how to really listen and how to really, and, and how to make almost anything <laughs> um, come out positive. I mean, for instance, we start every PDI with uh, what? Um, tell me what happened that was great last, good last week, something like that. I forget what it is. I should remember that. Um, and if they say, well, nothing happened that was good, well, tell me that something that was that wasn't good then that happened. And then you go, what did you learn from that? Okay, that's where we go with these PDIs. Okay, we go when you have somebody who 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 is really listened to and knows that you're there to development to develop them, um, that makes it so much easier. Do we get the whole program at one time or a shift one month at a time for three months? One month at a time for three months. I do not want you to be tempted to go on with this. I also don't want you to be overwhelmed. It will look overwhelming. It's not. It really is something that if you go through it month by month, it's a real simple and easy process. Uh, for a coach, what if you want to sell multiple, more than three systems on an ongoing basis? Oh, we're, we've got that down. I mean, we're, that's what we plan to do. I mean, that's that's the whole reason for this. I have some of the biggest coaches in, in uh, Kennedy-type marketing. For those of you who know Kennedy, I've got Bill Goff, Micro, uh, um, Bill Harrison, tons of them that are set up to uh, go on this. I will be, oh, thank you, that's another good question. I will be available to come and speak if you put enough people. <laughs> I don't, uh, I will be available for teleseminars, webinars, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I expect for our sales in this to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 80% through JVs and 20% direct. So yeah, in, we are totally dedicated to JVs. Uh, frankly, would not have even come to market with it, likely, if not for that. For a coach, what if I want to sell, got that one? How can I buy this system? Oh, www.keithlee.com slash 3D mail. Go there right now. How do I get into your program for coaches? All you need to do, okay, good. How do you get into the program? You should all have Travis's email, Travis at 3D mail results .com. Uh, Travis at 3dmailresults.com. If you want to be a JV, just send him an email and say JV. Now, as you go, we're going to let everyone know um, what you need to do to be a JV. Also, so it's not going to it's not going to be a secret on this thing. But you know, one of the things you might want to do is is let us know. Is this a different package other than the bonuses than the one here? I'm not. Uh, Retail. Yes. Yes. Um, yes, it's way different than the one at American Retail Supply Retail Resources. I'm not. Uh, make you happy management system. Eh. If it's uh, if it's um, 
it, I'm sure it is. That's my old system. I haven't even looked at that, frankly. Uh, we need to get it off there, I believe. Um, that's the not step-by-step -step system. It's not even available any longer. Looks like fun. Can I get uh, can I get your bucket list? No, you cannot have my grandkid. <laughs> order, pay, order page has issue processing cards. Oh, my God. Well, must be Mount St. Helens says that. Will you record and share this? Okay, so that's all the questions I have. Email, um, if, if the order page is having pros, um, problems, please uh, make sure that Travis, uh, Travis at 3dmailresults.com gets an email if you want to order it. Uh, we'll certainly make sure that we get that solved. Thank you for your time. That looks like all the questions, and uh, it's been great spending my time with you. Bye now.